Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Mora, as you might know if you've been here before. Um, just before I begin, I want to say quickly that this is a case about child abuse and neglect. So if that is something that bothers you, it might be a time to step away. There's no extreme violence, but obviously there is death and this one bothers you. Just skip over this one. Thank you so much to Stasha Massey who commented about this case on my, uh, my video about Elisa Izquierdo, which is another New York City case that is actually a year after this one. Um, I had never heard of it. I'm not from New York, and I'm also um, a little bit younger than when that happened, so I've never heard about it, but this case is definitely something that needs to be talked about, so thank you to her again. But with that, let's begin. This is the story of Nadine Lockwood. In September of 1991 in Washington Heights in New York City, Carla Lockwood gave birth to her seventh child, Nadine Lockwood. This isn't an excuse of what happened, but I want to make it clear that this is not a thing of just like, she was crazy, he was crazy, they're just bad people, because there's so many more things that go into this. And this is definitely a case where you can see how widespread the fault goes. I just wanted to mention that because if you don't understand that, it's hard to understand the rest of this case and like how this happened. So Carla has Nadine in 1991 and this is her seventh child. So she thinks, you know, I don't have the time, I don't have the space, I don't have the money, and she wants to give her up for adoption. But Nadine's father, Leroy Dickerson, I think I'm saying that right, argues that he wants her to keep her, so she does. There's not much going into that, but um, that decision was made. As it was, Carla's kids weren't getting the education they should have been getting. It seems that overall they were given, you know, food and stuff, and they weren't like malnourished it seems but all of them had a really really poor attendance record with school her eldest nicole had missed an average of 80 days a year in sixth grade she just stopped going all together apparently just to take care of her younger siblings her teachers literally labeled her in the system as just not found they said that they came to her apartment tried to find her didn't find her marked her as not found. That status is supposed to be like after extensive search. It would be like basically if a person took their kid and moved without telling anyone. It seems like they, they looked maybe twice. Maybe. There apparently was a p period of time where the other kids didn't go to school at all until the, um, I believe it's ACS there, but I must say CPS a lot, the Child Protective Services, just because that's what I'm um, really used to. It's the same thing. They were called and they were finally forced to like go to school. Still, they missed a combined 212 days in a year. If you didn't know, a teacher or school is actually supposed to report to either the Child Protective Services or even, even sometimes the police if a child misses more than 20 days. It took the school literally 70 days to even like ask them about it, to even let them know that they can't be doing that. Um, and they didn't seem to do much after that either. And if they had just called the hotline, the, what is it called? In New York, I guess, it's called the state, the state central register hotline. They literally would have saved Nadine's life because someone would have been able to go in and check and see what's going on. Um, or at least that's what you would hope. In the same like school district, um, one attendance coordinator, uh, who is, it's what they sound like, it's the person who's in charge of making sure kids are going to school, was in charge of 27,000 kids, which is ridiculous. Admitted that he didn't even look for like missing kids most of the, the time and was, was found to be literally making up records. On one hand, it is certainly his fault that he didn't do this, but on the other hand, they should not have been giving him 27,000 people to take care of. That is ridiculous. Um, and that is why I mentioned stuff about like poverty and why kids in these areas so often get lost to the system and why the fault is not just on her parents. Um, but I'm sorry, <laughs> back to Nadine. Um, I, I'm, I am really sorry to not just focus on her, but all of the kids in her family were abused, all of them. And a lot of the, articles I read didn't really seem to like me like mention that they didn't seem to like pay any attention to the fact that like like yeah they mentioned like yeah her her siblings had to see and how bad for them but they didn't say her siblings were also abused and neglected and that's you know they, they were all victims so 
Apparently, Carla made no attempts to even seem like she loved Nadine. Um, she was like, I guess she pretty openly hated her and did not want her. Her siblings say that her parents literally called Nadine the Beast or it. They kept her in her crib her entire life. Um, this was, uh, I think that they had a, Carla had like a three or four bedroom apartment or like complex and in one of the rooms, which seems to also be like a playroom, uh, was Nadine's crib and she did not change the mattress, she did not change the sheets, um, she didn't care for Nadine, basically. They literally put a sheet over her so that she didn't have to look at Nadine. Even by the age of four, she was still in the crib. As young as two years old, Carla would just put a sandwich in the crib and expect her daughter to eat it um, when she likely did, couldn't even didn't even have those skills to like pick up a sandwich because she wasn't being paid attention to. In one article, it said that like her siblings would often like take the food that they, that her mother gave Nadine. So in that way, it makes me think that maybe they also weren't getting enough food. Carla would also bring her like a glass of milk and hold it to her lips for like a second and let her get like a sip in and then just let her hold it. But if you've ever tried to have a baby hold something, they cannot hold things. You do not give a baby a cup. It doesn't make any sense. And on top of that, she was likely very weak and didn't, again, didn't have like the facilities to hold a cup. So um, even when she was giving her food, was she, was she really? Obviously her siblings saw what was happening, but they, there was nothing they could really do about it. Even if they were going to school I don't think they had the language to explain what was happening um, or <laughs> the fear that would come with that either. They were actually told that if anyone asked about Nadine that she was down south visiting family. For all of Nadine's life, she was ignored. She was kept in a rickety crib on a dirty mattress. She was not fed much at all. Um, she was not cleaned. She was not bathed. She was just left there in a crib with a sheet over her so no one had to look at her. Carla Lockwood basically blamed her for everything that went bad in her life. In question about it later, Carla would admit to not having fed Nadine regularly in over a year. When Nadine was found August 31st of 1996, the police couldn't tell how old she was because she was literally skin and bone. She only weighed 15 and a half pounds. If you're not familiar with babies, she literally weighed as much as a six month old, a little bit less actually. She was almost five. Carla said outright that she hated her daughter. Leroy, her father, was basically like, I haven't been, I haven't come over in a couple months as if that's an excuse. Um, and he said that he thinks Carla didn't, didn't like Nadine because she looked the most like him. So understand, this isn't a situation of, well, Carla didn't have enough money to feed the child. The others were fed at least enough to, to not be, you know, malnourished. They, they were poor, yes, but it's not like feeding a four-year-old takes that much in the first place. If you, if you could feed six other kids, you can probably feed the other one. This was intended starvation. Between the last shot and this one, Indominus decided to join me, so I'm sorry about that. On top of the schools of this area not doing what they're supposed to do, Child Protective Services also didn't. Hey, excuse me, that was mean. So Carla Lockwood had um, before Nadine given birth to a child who tested positive for drugs at birth and Nadine herself also tested positive at birth. Um, and when this happens, I don't know if it's in, I believe it's in all states, but maybe it's not. I know that most states, if that happens, CPS is called immediately um, because that would mean that uh, the parent was doing drugs while they were pregnant. So obviously there's an issue there. They shouldn't have a child with them. So they had a record 
of Carla Lockwood. And yet nothing was done about it. No one checked in. She was a known addict and was known to have used while pregnant. Her neighbors said that they had called in about things because they would, they knew Nadine was there but never saw her. And they saw her, her children never going to school and you know, other things. Yeah, hi. And I mean, her children were basically missing almost half of school. Literally almost half of school overall. One of the schools that these kids went to um, did in fact call in to the Child Protective Services and they said that they made a, a report with them. There's zero documentation of it. So either they lost it or they never did it, um, which has been an issue before. If you've watched the, the case on Elisa, you know that it's definitely not a solved thing, especially not even a year after this. So as I said before, the school um, attendance counselor, uh, his name was Mr. Alvarez. He had a piss poor record of investigations. Um, he would make up reports. He would claim to have gone, but never have gone. He'd go, knock, leave, but write in his in his reports that he had like talked to people and really searched. Later, when he had been asked about Nicole's case, the older sister who dropped out of school at, in sixth grade, he literally couldn't even remember it. Um, and he never even checked on her siblings at all. You'd think that you'd go, okay, well, if this, if this kid is having these issues, let's check the other kids. Let's see if they have any siblings. Are they experiencing the same issues? Is this something that is an issue with just this child or is this an issue among the family? They didn't. Again, he had 27,000 cases. Um, I believe this is the same person, um, which is ridiculous. And that is the state's fault. That is not their fault. Um, still. You could have done something. So after Nadine was found, both Carla and Leroy were arrested. Uh, both of them were, were sentenced to jail for second degree murder and child endangerment. Although Dickerson said that he hadn't visited Nadine in several months, um, his kids test the, the kids testified in court that he had just as much to do with Nadine's death as Carla did. Um, so Carla got 15 to life, Leroy got 25 to life, which frankly, I think that's weird and unfair. Also, something that really, really pissed me off, Carla, in the time between Nadine's death and the beginning of the trial, had had an eighth child and had given her, uh, that child up for adoption, thank God. And at court, um, like during court, was complaining of issues with her stomach, taken to the doctor and it was found that she was pregnant with twins. Um, literally, pregnant with her ninth and 10th children at the trial to hurt other daughters murder. <sighs> oh my God. As far as I could tell, the other children were kept together in foster care. Um, and you know, usually there's not a lot of information um, about the other children either because they weren't victims or because they were all below 18 but if those siblings ever hear this i am so fucking sorry for that kind of shit that you had to go through but also just like the ignorance that a lot of articles had in that they only talked about nadine and obviously what happened to her was awful and terrible but like there's no mention of the impact that would have on the sibling's life and like how having to see your sister die is probably pretty damn traumatic and like and 
the type of abuse that is also a type of abuse and they are victims as well and the fact that they weren't like Carla and Leroy weren't charged for any of their abuse it really makes me mad um obviously there's there's a so much there's so much of a bigger issue than just like they were bad parents because it wasn't just that Nadine had some bad parents it was that her mother did not have the access to birth control or to the doctor she probably didn't have enough money Leroy probably didn't have enough money they didn't have access to better health care obviously there's a certain amount of a uh, terrible person in there because who does that but also schools could have stepped in CPS could have stepped in people at the hospital at her birth could have stepped in because she literally trust tested positive for drugs when she was born it's just if one person had come and checked on these kids and come into the house and seen Nadine seen where she like saw where she was it probably wouldn't wouldn't have happened you cannot look at the attendance records of these children and I actually I have an article below that is really interesting it talks about their attendance records and like gives basically a chart of it and it's crazy um you can't look at those and tell me that those children were not neglected or abused obviously child abuse is a very far-reaching issue it is across the world and it affects a lot of different aspects of life there's a lot of different types and in a lot of cases there are a lot of people who could help um, and yet it happens all the time every single day I I don't know why but for some reason the 90s were a very intense time for child abuse there are as I said, um, the story of Elisa happens a year after this one. Um, there was, there's another that happens a year before that was like majorly big in just New York. And there's obviously tons of other ones. It, honestly, they, there's a lot that specifically brought attention to how useless CPS was if they didn't have enough people working or if they didn't have enough funds. So I'm always up for, um, some reformation there but uh that's it for this one i'm sorry this is a tough one but i felt like it's really important to talk about because it's not a type of abuse that's talked about a lot um neglect isn't always seen as a type of abuse for some reason um when it definitely is it's not just violence and it's not just um emotional it is also not feeding your child or even like not bringing your child to school thank you guys for sticking with me i hope that this taught you something i hope that if you knew nadine's family that this brought some peace knowing that other people know about it i think that would help me um but if you want to help children in need i have some places linked below that you can help um I, there's one that's basically a list of resources for like every state so if you if you know someone who needs help you can call if you need help you can call if you see something you need to call because children can't always do that um and honestly in any situation if there's a person who's being abused one they might not even realize it especially children and two, they likely don't have the access that they, that you might have to help. Donate if you can, volunteer if you can, but also just like talking about it and letting people know that that is something that happens and that it's something that can be helped is helpful. And if there are other cases you want to bring attention to and we talk about, please let me know because I would not have known about this if not for Stasha Massey and thank you again because this is a very intense case but it's very important to know about so um you can message me in the comments twitter instagram I even have a tiktok um thank you guys I, I also have very different things on tiktok so um you don't don't expect this here this there but just so you know 
you want some stuff that's a little happier, that's good too. I like to be happy and laugh, but this is important. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye.